How you going guys, Steve here from Australian 4x4 Adventures again. You want to look under my hood? Today is part two of the build series and we're going to be looking at what's underneath the hood, in the back, electrical setup, a couple of bits and pieces. So let's get into it. So I've done a fair bit under mine, well electrically anyway, not so much motor wise, but um, I've run a triple, triple battery setup. Uh, run for a uh, Red Arc DCDC charger, the um, 1225, 1240. It's a 40 amp charger, whichever it is. I forget. So that's the uh, Red Arc charger there. It's just mounted on the front there underneath the uh, plastic grill. The reason it's mounted up the front there is to keep it cool because they get pretty hot with the amount of. Um, current that they push through them and push, push out as well so you mount them up against the front there you get a lot of ram air going straight through the grill keeps them nice and cool working well as soon as they get over 50 degrees they um, start to uh, shut down a little bit to save themselves so cool you keep them but they run obviously these things come out factory with two batteries so main battery main battery and then I got this one it already had the um, third auxiliary battery Put in it there. What I've done is I've, uh, I didn't want the two main cranking batteries, so I decided to put in um, one bigger single singular cranking battery, and I'll, I'll um, put up the details of what battery that is on the page somewhere there. Uh, and then I got two smaller deep cycle batteries, which I've obviously mounted one up there and one on the other side of the engine bay over there, in um, uh, linked together. So all up, I think they were 86 amp hours each, so give me 164 amp hours in total of second battery. Um, so they're linked together, obviously charged off of the Red Arc DC DC charger. Fairly simple setup, really. Essentially, it's just take out the other battery, put one bigger bigger battery in for the for the starter. Obviously, link the two two together. That's mostly about it for the. Uh, for what I've done today, I've tried to keep it as, as clean and as factory as possible. Other thing I've done is the um, diff breather kit, also the gearbox breather and everything else. So that one there is basically running all the pipes up to one one central point up high in the engine bay. I've only technically hooked up one of the diffs at the moment. I um, I got a bit lazy, I haven't finished it off, but it's a four port uh, thing there, so you can take all of them at once. In the back, this is where most of the electrical side of it goes to, because this is where pretty much everything gets ran. Um, so as you can see there on the side, I've got the main and auxiliary battery voltage. Um, main on the left, auxiliary on the right. Also there, the top I have some USB points, so both of those ones are USB points each. Um, and then the bottom ones there are cigarette lighter ones, they're the lockable ones as well, so I can lock lock the things in there if I do it when I'm moving. So what I've got on that side, I have also got on this side here. So this side is um, USB points up the top and then obviously the uh, cigarette lighter points down the bottom. It's all ran off of the uh, fuse block I've got un mounted under here as well. So this way I, uh, if anything does go wrong, I've got plenty of scope for troubleshooting. So it's pretty easy to find if something goes wrong, just check all the fuses. If it's not, not wrong, if all the fuses are good, obviously it just means it's the power supply getting to this. So it's only one, one more fuse under the bonnet to check, so it's all pretty easy to do. Um, yeah, so we'll try and keep it fairly simple and fairly neat. That way there's less stuff to go wrong, and hopefully uh, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, it all just works for you. The other one I've done is the fridge slide. So it's the MSA, MSA drop-down fridge slide there. It's the 65-litre um, fridge freezer from Engel and obviously that's the slide that suits. Um, there's a bit of trickery with this one in the sense of uh, how it's all wired up. I, I had it set up eight for ages where um, the cord would, I'd have to sort of hold it in a certain spot to get in and out. Now I've got this uh, cable chain stuff that you feed the cable through and it rolls up one way or another and um, sort of keeps it out of the way nicely. So I'll see if I can get that to work for you with the lights as well. 
There's the cable chain there. So as you pull it forward, you'll see that basically rolls its way out. And then same on the way back in. Nice and easy. Nowhere for the cable to get caught. Obviously the other part of the cable is just on the uh, underneath it. Runs along to the Anderson plug which is screwed down so it can't go anywhere. Which runs to the power behind the drawers there. Just another, another angle of it there so you can see the uh, the uh, chain sort of rolling up as the fridge goes in and out. Anderson plug which leads all the way down to the power in here which also leads me to the compressor. So pull that out of the way. So down here I am... Um, that just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> um, obviously the compressor's wired up permanently there. Usually it's just off, obviously it's on a pressure sensitive switch so it only, only pump up to a certain amount. Uh, obviously it's all earthed down there as well. A bit of light. That's better. And um, that's pretty much it. Obviously I've run the hose down underneath the seat into the footwell so that way I've just got to reach under and grab it out from there. So the air hose just tucked up under there, pull it out, plug the actual hose into it, job done. Alright, so that's mostly it for the electrical side of it. So I've done a done most of that stuff myself. So it's um I don't know, I'm a big big fan of doing things yourself to do it right. I did get the auto spark to wire up a couple of things for me just on certain things I, I'm not the best electrical at, so got him to do a few things for me. Um with the drawers, obviously they're the Titan uh, full drive super center drawers. They're not bad overall. I, I'm, I actually quite like them for the for the price of them. For I think I got I think I paid 460 bucks for them something like that. So they're dirt cheap compared to your Black Widows and MSA and and ARB and Outback drawers and stuff like that. Where they're two two and a half three grand for some of them. I can't see the value in drawers more than sort of the. the 500 that I spent on these ones. I did look at trying to do lights inside the drawers that move in and out. Um, pretty fussy on how I wanted it to be done and I couldn't quite achieve it the way I wanted to where essentially it was just a, a touch, touch touch positive at the end. So every time you, you'd open the drawer it just sort of come on straight away and then shut it again it turns off. Um, it's not quite enough room in there to do it nicely the way I wanted to. I'm still trying to figure that one out. On, on the best way of achieving that for myself. Um, what I do, I'll pull up though, and I'll, I'll share share how it's all been done. If you want any more detail on the uh, on the drop down fridge slide wiring, just let me know. I'll see if I can post up a couple of photos for, for everyone to do it. But, um, it's really easy. The, the cable chain's like three bucks off eBay, and I just used the factory factory um, lead that came with the fridge. I did have to obviously cut the cigarette light off and put the, the ends and plug on. It's a bit nerve wracking when those cables are about fifty bucks each. They're not cheap. That's about it for part two of the build series. Uh, next one is probably going to be on suspension. I've done a fair bit suspension wise for this one. It's all. I'll leave that for next time. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And any questions, comments, or anything else, chuck them in the uh, comments below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Have a good one, guys. See ya.